Asking someone if they believe in God is a question that can lead to confrontation and division. What if, instead, we reflected on a core human experience that everyone can relate to? Professor Fiona Ellis at the University of Roehampton, London, is asking if human desire could open a dialogue about the divine. If you want to understand God and the question of God, we're saying, here's an exploratory approach. Everybody's interested in desire. Everybody agrees that it's a really important part of what it means to be human, whether they're atheists or theists. Look within, reflect upon your experience of desiring, and you may well find that we'll be able to draw some really interesting conclusions. The word desire can mean a lot of things. so. What exactly does Professor Ellis mean by it? First of all, we acknowledge that desire is a complex phenomenon. There are appetitive desires, desires that I have in common with my dog and cat, for example, um, the desire for food and drink and sex. But we're also concerned with this idea of desire as a kind of longing or yearning for something we cannot quite put our fingers on, a kind of spiritual longing, very different from when you want a piece of cake, for example. In that kind of case, the desire seems to function as some kind of lack within the subject. You know, you feel hungry, you eat something, the desire disappears. Now, the kind of longing with which we're concerned doesn't seem to function like that. It seems to intensify rather than being eliminated. A kind of desire which is beyond satisfaction. Hemingway once said it's a kind of yearning or longing for something we know not quite what. And I think everybody acknowledges this kind of experience. It's somehow built into what it means to be human. And we want to make a case for claiming that it could well involve being attracted to God. And built into our understanding of this kind of spiritual longing or yearning is the idea that you're being led in a particular direction, not in spite of yourself, but along with yourself, so to speak. So it's a feeling of being attracted to something of supreme value. But couldn't the experience of desire be explained just as easily in atheistic terms as it could in theistic terms? There's the kind of model that you get in somebody like Jean-Paul Sartre. He agrees that there is this yearning or longing at the root of our human being. He wants to say, we've got this impossible desire that is pointing nowhere because it's a desire for God, but God does not and could not exist. Man is a useless passion. He's got this desire that just causes deep unhappiness and contradiction. We want to challenge the idea that this kind of desire points nowhere. We want to say that there is a kind of yearning or longing which is fundamental to what it means to be human. That has its source in God and it takes God as its object. Here's something that for many people is exceedingly spooky and weird, something that's not remotely respectable from an intellectual point of view. It's as if, you know, you're postulating some weird entity up there. And we're wanting to say, forget about parapsychology, forget about telepathy. Let's begin with ordinary experience. Let's think about the experience of falling in love with another human being. Iris Murdoch, she said that when you fall in love with somebody, for the first time, the center of significance is ripped outside of the selfish ego, so that suddenly it's no longer me, 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 but rather you, you, you. So different from what's happening in the cake situation, just you kind of filling yourself up. This is the opposite. It's emptying yourself out towards the other person, the yearning or a longing towards something other than the self, perhaps something of supreme value. As exciting as this line of questioning is, how can we ever really know for sure? How can we answer the question of desire once and for all? So we're not suggesting these questions can be closed, but we are suggesting that they require to be opened and kept open. But we're all in this together, atheists, agnostics and theists, and we're trying to understand the limits of 
the limits of our humanity. So we want to move away from division and confrontational debate and move in the direction of dialogue instead.